Uh, good day, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am here to present uh, my paper on industrial, sorry, infrastructure and infrastructure development in Africa. Uh, kind of luckily for me, uh, nearly all the, the speakers that I've listened to kind of attended to most of the issues that I was supposed to mention. Uh, again, uh, my background is uh, engineering, and I'm a student of technology management. So I will be looking at uh, secondary data that have already been discussed extensively by, by most others. And then I'm also interested in technology and industrial policy, so I will be kind of looking at what has worked elsewhere and see what can propose same for Africa's for Africa, for her industrial development. Uh, I have very few slides will be taking us through perhaps between seven to eight slides. And I think I'll be able to round up within the stipulated time. So we'll look at a brief introduction, which has already been attended to exclu I mean, extensively by various speakers, like I said. And then we'll be looking at the role of infrastructure and industrial development and infrastructure investment in Africa, policy considerations, and then I'll conclude. Of course, these are well-known facts that uh, Africa is growing at a very fast pace, uh, around about 5%. five percent. But as impressive as that growth is, uh, broad-based economic development has remained elusive, which is a fact we're all conversant with. And lack of industrial development uh, seems to be the major problem of broad-based of broad economic development of the continent. And somehow, inadequate infrastructure has been fingered as a culprit uh, towards Africa's uh, industrialization. Uh, the challenges are enormous, as we know, and therefore we require strategic policy op options, which we'll be looking at. Uh, like I said, because so many of us have discussed the key issues, I wouldn't want to bother us with uh, literature on what constitutes infrastructure and what is investment, but we'll be looking at some of the issues that I, I mentioned. Infrastructure needs for industrial development will include the energy, a robust transport infrastructure that would mean uh, Africa will begin to think of uh, transnational uh, road infrastructure, rail, rail lines, uh, as well as airports, seaports, and waterways. In addition to the above three uh, constraints, also, another one is technological infrastructure that we need to also look at, specifically uh, ICT, uh, broad, broadband uh, internet backbone across the sub-region, though that's improving. Uh, and then the issue of absorptive capacity is also a problem. How large is the constraint? Of course, it's been stated that investment needs of African countries' infrastructure exceed by far the amounts being invested currently by the various governments across the continent. And at Africa, we need a total of two, or over 250 billion US, billion US dollars for her to address our infrastructural challenges. Again, uh, like, like, like as it was mentioned by the previous speaker, road access rate is really a problem that 5% compared to 50 in other parts of the developing world. Transport costs are high by up to like 100, 100 times compared to other regions, similar regions. Only 30% of the population has access to electricity compared to 70 to 90 in other parts of the developing world. Again, internet penetration, we seem to also have the least among other related regions in the world. Now, having looked at uh, the problems 
and then the issues that are challenging uh, industrial development in Africa, uh, the kind of policy considerations or things, ideas, and methods one need to look at proposed for Africa women industrial clustering. Uh, I'm glad to say that the idea was also mentioned by the lead speaker of the conference. Uh, Africa needs to develop industrial clusters. Luckily for us, like an example is the Nigerian current industrial policy is premised on uh, clustering, industrial clustering. They will seem to be uh, trying to develop industrial clusters so as to encourage industrial development in, in, in the country. A close example to industrial clustering is uh, uh, special economic uh, zones. South Africa is also trying to adopt uh, the establishment of special industrial economic zones, rather, to address a reindustrialization uh, uh, drive. Another one could be industrial upgrading. Uh, African countries need to encourage uh, private sector and industries into starting small, uh, doing simple uh, components, and then from there, perhaps can, can take up to more complex stages of uh, manufacturing. One could, critical example could be in tooling. We can start to think of uh, uh, making basic tools in our African countries. Then uh, when it comes to uh, financing the private pub public private partnership initiative has been uh, kind of adopted uh, broadly in the continent with uh, the attendant benefits. A good number of countries have attracted foreign transnationals uh, to set up uh, uh, industries. Then there is also the uh, direct foreign investment options as well as official development options open to African countries to attract uh, funds into the African continent. And above all, uh, it will require African countries providing uh, a favorable investment climate. So of course, you understand that from the World Competitiveness Index, African countries are kind of at the bottom of uh, uh, the, the data when it comes to uh, investment climate. Yeah, and in concluding, uh, uh, like I said, uh, Africa is growing at a fast pace, but economic development is not broad-based enough. Infrastructure inadequacy is a major constraint to industrial development in the continent, as identified by very many speakers along the line. And then industrial development in Africa should emphasize investment in infrastructure, as it is seen as the, the problem of uh, our industrialization process, and above all, uh, we need to look at the right policy mixes that will take us to towards industrialization as against the deindustrialization that is happening in the continent. Uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs>